is match day. It's a big game. It's an important game today. There's no doubt about it. These draws that we've been picking up, I think a, a brave draw against Tottenham, a, a disappointing draw against Aston Villa, and, well, no points against Newcastle. But these draws only mean something if you can punctuate them with wins, particularly when you're going for a European place, which West Ham undoubtedly are. Oh, I've got a guest with me today. It's voice of an angel. Um, the Womford Warbler. Uh, the South End Swooner. Um, <laughs> I, I can't think of any others at the moment. It's Mike Wallaby Jr. How are you, mate? We go for the Canning Town uh, Cantanta, which is Spanish for singer. So we'll oh, have the Canning Town Cantanta, because I'm from Custom House originally. So there, we need there we something go. that works with that, don't we? That we like it. Spanish. We, we, like, we like it. We like that one. I'll, I'll think of a few more for the next time. Um, how are yeah. you? Yeah, I'm all right. I'm well. You? Yeah, yeah, good. I'm really well, thanks, mate. Really, really well. Um... You you're coming over here actually, aren't you? In the next uh, next few days, aren't you? Yes, I'm over on Wednesday. I'm gutted because I can't get to your. I've already made arrangements with a friend of mine to go and watch the game in his local pub with his dad. Who I haven't seen his dad for a while. And as soon as we confirmed that, I saw your event down at the Colour Factory, Hackney Wick. And I, of course, I was at the at the last one. You were, the, you were, the, you final, were the, for the for the Euro- European Conference final. So I was gutted that I couldn't make that one. But I tell you what, if we uh, if we get through a little bit further, I might have to plan another cheeky trip over to London and join Gio and yourself and the rest of the boys down there. But yes, I'm over on Wednesday because uh, I'm I'm performing, doing some shows around the Essex area. Um, so I don't know if we'll go into that or later on. Well, I'll tell you what, stay stay tuned because if you have not seen Michael before or heard him sing, more importantly, um, then stay tuned. We're going to tell you where in Essex he is performing now. When myself um, and Michael were, we were having a little chat beforehand about West Ham primarily, and we were talking about this game, Wolves. There's a, there's a few things I want to discuss. I want to discuss Craig Dawson. I um, mm. want to discuss a couple of the other things and and, um, and whether you think we should be um, resting, rotating, and what more you should do. But we got onto the subject of Calvin Phillips, and you've you've got a little theory with Calvin Phillips, haven't you? Yeah, I have. Well, let me preface it by saying I'm not a psychologist. I'm a singer. But we were talking about um, about what's affecting his performances. And I think there's a little phenomenon, which as soon as I said to you, you seem to have heard of it. Called it's the a golfing term. A golfing term. It is term, a golfing it? term. It yeah. is. But it, I mean, normally in golf, it's referred to as people having a slight change unconsciously of their grip and it changes their swing. But there's also been cases of it. So, so to, to give it a, a broader overview... It's it's sort of psychological anxiety, performance anxiety. So there's been cases of this in American sport, like for example in baseball, um, where there's been successful successful bat- batters and their batting average has been brilliant. And then for one reason or another, something creeps into their mind, and they've not really changed any part of their technique, and they just swing and miss and can't hit the ball. We've had it in basketball where there'll be specialists at free throws where they, you know, every time they're at the line, they're guaranteed more or less to score points. And then there'll be something creeping into their brain. And then all of a sudden, they'll just miss a load of free throws. And you can do this and go back and get the coaching and make sure your technique's on point. And the first time I came across this was I used to play snooker at quite a high level. And of course, as you referenced, I used to live in Hornchurch and Romford years ago. Um, And I actually played... um, under matchroom as a, as a teenager, early teens, and had the same coach as a successful Essex-based snooker player. Yeah, um, yeah. so <laughs> he and I had a, a fellow called John Westgate, and he was our coach. We used to go and train on Wednesdays and Fridays. And this fellow was four years older than me and was a great player, was just about to turn, well, he had actually turned professional. But for some reason, he could pop balls off the lab shade. And he went through this phase where he got a, a mental block cleaning up the colours, going from brown from brown to blue when the colours were on their spots. So he would put any yeah, other no ball... No problem with the yellow, the yellow to green. No problem, yellow no to green, problem. no problem. Green to brown, no problem. Brown to blue, he would fall short. Of course, brown to blue, you normally screw, screw up for the blue in the middle pocket, stone run through for the pink, and he just couldn't... He would, he would leave himself short or he'd overrun it to the point where if John, if John, the coach, would change, exchange the brown for any other colour, put a red on the brown spot and say, perform the shot. He could play the shot perfectly, 100 out of 100. But as soon as it was brown to blue, he would overrun it or underscrew it. And in the end, when he, when he was in his early career, if you go back and look, a lot of the time he chose to just roll the brown in and take a long blue in the top corner. 
to avoid playing that shot. But if halfway through the game, halfway through the break, he was playing the same shot on a different colour ball, he did it 100 times out of 100. And even now, and he's obviously in his mid to late 40s now, even now, as one of the greatest players the game's seen, if he's gonna if he's gonna run out of position on a break, it is from brown to blue. So eventually in his career, he, he found a quite a, f- a famous sports psychologist called uh, Steve Peters, who works with Chris Hoy and the British cycling team, and he's done a lot of work sort of on the head. But that's definitely the first case I saw of the yips. So it's not a physical problem. It's not like Calvin Phillips has has lost a yard of pace or his legs are gone or he's got older. But certainly he seems slower because he's late to the tackle. His decision-making is slower. He's loitering on the ball. And I, yes. think that, I think that's his brain. I think that's his social, professional anxiety. I think that's his confidence. I've even known in my game as a singer, singers that have performed for 20, 30 years, all of a sudden get a mental block over a certain note in a song that they've sung for 20 years, or even completely forget lyrics that they've sung for 20 years. Seriously, I knew yeah, a fellow no, no, that worked... I, I, Yeah, I know, I know it. Happens. You know, I, I knew a fellow that worked here. He, he, he was from America, but he worked over here for 20 years or so. And he went through some stress in his life, went through a, a messy divorce. Uh, and when he went back to sing again, he had the same swagger, the same confidence on stage. But the lyrics fell out of his head. And then he would end up jumbling up the songs. And actually, to the point where he went to the docks, he was worried about early early dementia. He was worried about short, short, brain short. function. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, yeah. And it, it was, it was none, of the, none of the above. It was just simply the psychological aspect of maybe the pressure, maybe coming back to Calvin Phillips, maybe the pressure he's been under, maybe because his career has stalled for 18 months, two years at City. And I really feel like what he needs is not a coach or extra training or fitness work. I feel like he needs a sport psychologist to try and sort his brain out. Because I think there maybe still is a player in there. I know our friend Chris Agabusi felt that he'd maybe seen him drop off physically. But I think if he has got the yips or some sort of psychological block, that would account for the slow sort of process in time. And I wondered what you thought about that. Well, I, well, I think... I, I well, let's let's hope neither of you are right. I, I mean, I hope neither mm. you or Chris are right. But it would suggest that something is is wrong. Something is amiss. To, there were times when it was, I think it was in Russia, when he played alongside Declan Rice, where he looked like the better player. And actually, it was him that Gareth Southgate gave the license to. They weren't both holding. It was a case of Declan, you hold. This mm. guy's gonna, and he could do a, a little bit more. So it's clear he's got the ability, but there's been some shift somewhere along the line. It's funny that you say that because I don't like to over... I didn't like what Anthony Gordon did because it is sort of borderline cheating, right? But we've got one of those in our team and he's called Lucas Paqueta and he yeah. is... He does it as well. He is... I have a I have a suspicion if we ever played against we did, I guess we did play against him I didn't particularly notice him um, but if we played against him I would hate him Paqueta yeah uh, he's yeah. non-stop he's in the air he's go he, he's see he's even done it to his best mate he, he wants he wants you to slap him he's you know it's it's quite funny a lot of the characteristics I probably detest in Mikel Arteta are probably characteristics that. Pacatar has got himself. Well, um, the last so, time you and I spoke, we were talking about Neil Malpai, Maypai, weren't we? We were, we were, yeah. We yeah, were talking and, about him, and that's exactly the sort of thing when he plays against you, you hate him. When he's on your team, you sort of, I mean, not that I like all the theatrics, but no, he's, he's our sod, isn't he? You know it, what it, I mean? It, yeah, he is. So, I, you know, but once, even if you've decided, even once you decide, I don't like what uh, Anthony Gordon did, or whatever, or the referee should have pulled up on it or if he doesn't VAR should have looked it and thought actually it was Gordon that obstructed uh, Phillips from kicking the ball even if you take all of those or any one of those three things into account there's still some there's a real stark reality here and this is something that, all, that worried me when I saw it Anthony Gordon in, his t- in the time it took him 
The time it took Calvin Phillips to pull his leg back and then try and kick the ball, in that time, Anthony Gordon's brain has processed not only that he is about to do it, he has physically got into a position where he can do it. He's planted, he's planted his foot, he's processed what's going on in his brain. He's done all of these things. In the time it's taken Calvin Phillips to kick the ball, and that's a bloody concern. And, 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 and whether it is your yips or Akabusi's um, basically falling off a cliff in terms of his, his fitness, um, if, if I, um, ironically, I say this in a day when Jesse Lingard, because when myself and Gio talked about it, you know, we were talking about other players who reached the peak, you know, maybe, you know, in their 20s and then just dropped off a cliff mm. um, and, and just could never get back to that right, that place again. And it was quite funny. And it was, as we record this today, which is the day before the game, which is on a Friday, Lingard's manager at FC Seoul has said, I don't even consider him to be a footballer. Really? He, he can't even train. Yeah, absolutely. He's not even training. He's not even training. Or he's he's at so such a low level. And and the irony is, uh, Jesse Lingard's gone back onto his social media, and, and Lingard's basically started whatever chirping back, tweeting, tweeting back, or whatever. Now I remember if you go back not even that far, um, Jesse Lingard probably less than a year ago was filming himself doing weights and stuff like that, and then he also did some sprints with Pablo Fornells. And Paul Scholes actually replied to him on his social media and said, Are "You actually going to do anything? You're a footballer. Are you going to do anything with the ball?" Uh, you know, it's a joke be... between friends. Yeah, Sorry, we, we, we know that fitness was never a problem for Jesse Lingard. Look at when he came to us on loan. We was all worried about him being match fit and up to scratch. Came in and took off straight away like he had a rocket pack on his shoes, didn't he? He came yeah. straight in up to speed. Fitness was never a problem. Drawing it back to Calvin Phillips, I don't think he's a 28-year-old man. He, you know, he obviously trained at a, a decent level. Gio's theory, or, or was, the information he was given, that was that the level of training at Man City was to such a high standard that he's almost match fit all the time. Coming back to what you're saying, it's a processing thing. It, it leads me to, to to believe it's a processing thing. The same as the first error when when, when with the back pass, when he when he gave the, the, the first time he yeah. ever appeared in a West Ham shirt. Took too long to make the decision on the ball. And that's a confidence thing, you know? So it doesn't seem like a physiological question of fitness or sharpness. I mean, you, you and I like to talk boxing or UFC. It's either ring rust isn't it? Sure. Or it's maybe or it's ring, ring rust, yeah. Yeah, or, or or it's or it's mental block. And, yeah, and yeah, I, quite, I, quite, I, quite, I, quite possibly. Or, or or he's or he's or he's just never gonna hear that. Well, it's, it's like it's like Chris said. He's got his supernova, and I, I, I totally understand. He, he's talking about a supernova star, ones that goes huge, burns bright, and then mm. explodes. Not like our trusty old sun that keeps going and going and going. Yeah. You know, it, it's 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 a little bit like that. And and yeah, I do wonder. I tell you what, I do think though. Um, I, I do think whether, whether you're right or whether Chris is right, or it's somewhere the both or somewhere in between, or any you know any number of things, we can't sort it out because. Actually, the, one of the first things you said is, is your pal with the snooker and the, mm. the green. Uh, so the, the green and the yellows was fine. I, I don't think it's any. Well, I'm, I'm looking at that, and I, I am not a snooker player, but I do know what snooker. I do. Know, I do know what snooker is. Um, I, I think when you're getting onto the blue, so the blue's five points, brown is six. So I got it right. Black is seven. Brown, I, I, brown's I, four. I, brown's four. Blue's five. Pink, pink, six. pink is six. That's pink, is, that's funny, yeah. isn't it? That's funny. But, but I, I think you, you, you're getting into the higher numbers, aren't you? You know, I, I think you know you pot a red, then you you pot. Was it the yellow, then the green? Is that right? Yellow, green, brown. Like those, um, pink, and I just I just wonder. So what? You know what? The yellow's two points, and then what's the green? So you got hit red in between them. So I, mean, I just wonder if you're then, but if you're the time you're doing that, you're actually. <laughs> It doesn't matter. You can hit a red and still come back into the game when when the, when the, all the balls have been broken and, and whatever, it's all been broken up. Mm -hmm. I, I think what it is on that one is it means something. And well, you, usually well, if you're going from green to brown, the reds are all gone. Yes. And you're just on the colours and you're going yeah. for the clearance. Yes. You're going to clear the table. Yes. But as, as we said, the coach who was a fantastic snooker coach that had dealt with many, many professionals over 40 years, there was nothing he could do to fix that. He could go and make sure he was cueing the ball properly, he could make sure his stance was right, he was stepping into the shot correctly, you know, he, his eyes were, were lined up over the cue. But it, was, it wasn't until he actually went and saw somebody to deal with a mental issue 
Yeah, but what I'm saying, to, what I'm saying to you is, if at the start, of the, if if you and me are playing a are playing a, a frame of snooker, and I, I I put a red, then I put a colour, then I missed the next red, oh, that's okay. Um, mm. I, I'm not saying anything. Oh, I've lost the game now. That's it. It's such a pivotal point of the game because the, the likelihood, unless you are complete mustard, you're not going to clear up from that point. I'm going to get another turn, aren't I? And I just wonder if. A, if at that point, when all the reds are gone, you probably know at that point the gravity of the mistake is so much. I wonder if it's sort of resting on his shoulders. And I just wonder, applying that to Calvin Phillips, because he has had such, it was that 18 months of inactivity, I wonder if he now knows, and particularly at 28, I wonder if that's weighing on his shoulders, thinking, this is it. This is my last chance. And and so rather than him, that same kid who grew up in Yorkshire going out and playing and enjoying himself, he's now he going in and... Park. Yeah, he's going in and thinking, yeah. well, this this is it. I am. Do you know what they sometimes say about footballers? Um, they go for big fees, and the weight of that fee is is heavy on their shoulders. The same as James Ward Prowse and breaking his free kick record. You know, yes. you're absolutely right. I mean, the, 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 the argument with a snooker analogy would be surely the problem would be with the black. Surely the problem would be with sealing the game. However, I take he's the point. Probably, he's probably got it. Well, he's probably got it won by that point. It's, 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 you're probably not winning a. Fr- I'm just. I'm just. I'm, I don't. Yeah. I don't know enough the, about the it. The point but you... remains the same and correct yeah. what you're saying. It's yeah. the gravity of the situation. Yeah. And Calvin Phillips certainly knows it's probably make or break for his career now. And look, I don't think it's wildly uh, presumptuous to assume that he is. Maybe feeling the pressure. Look at the events of this week with the fans and getting on a coach. The signs are there that it is getting to him mentally. So what I'm saying is, yeah. I don't know if it's our responsibility as a club to 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 maybe bring a, a sports psychologist in to see him, or if it's Man City's or his own personal thing. But I just think that would be worth a shout if we, if you know, what what, what are we going to do with him for the rest of the season? Not use him, send him back home. Put him well, in I, I don't think box. we can fix him. I, 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 whether it's Chris, whether it's the, your yips or, or Chris's physical stuff, I don't think we can fix him between now and, and mid May. Uh, mid April May. I think the yips can be worked on yeah. with a sports psychologist. And I don't see what the, the club would have to lose by having him speak to somebody. And, and, and maybe if he could lift a little bit of that mental pressure and, and sort of try to embrace it. I mean, because that's the thing. Pressure makes diamonds. Some other people, when they come in and the pressure's on, they, they up their game. They perform better. It's just a matter of it's just a matter of how you see it. You know, I, I would rather sing to, you know, as you know, I did Hyde Park for, for 10 years running. I'd rather sing to 20,000 people than five, of course. than stand up in my living room and sing to the family, you know, sing <laughs> to the mother in law or whatever. It's yeah, easier yeah. to sing, yeah. you know, it's easier with a big occasion for me to get up for a show as opposed to turning up to a bar. And I mean, it's quiet here. It's Easter, a couple of weeks. It's quiet here in Tenerife. Well, I turned up at a bar last night. There must have been 30 people there that holds 500. So, you know, it's harder to do that than the nights when you're, I'm singing in arenas as I have. So it depends how you see the pressure. But it's an interesting thing, and I don't, I don't know. I just wondered what you were, your opinion on it was. No, no, no. I, I got out. And listen, I don't think it's a great subject. I think it's a great subject, Matt. Look, we, we, we'll finish up with just a very, very quick chat about Wolves and, and what you think about that. But uh, before I before I do, and then actually we, we talk about your, your singing as well before we talk about Wolves. Singing is a singing is a funny old game. All right, there, there, there are there are a few professions. So. If someone is a if someone is a bus driver and if someone say what do you do for a living you say I'm a bus driver, you're not forced to prove it. People don't say oh oh really <laughs> go and drive that bloody vehicle over there right. But singing is um is a lot like it's a lot like magic. So if you're a magician. Somebody will say to you oh what do you do for a living I'm, I'm, I'm a magician. Show us a trick. Yeah. Right? It's 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 that it's that sort of thing. oh you go people don't say if you are. Uh, <laughs> If people, if people don't say, oh, what do you do for a living? I'm a doctor. Oh, really? Um, you wouldn't have, have a look down. Oh, actually, have, have, have a look, a look at there with your doc. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> Stick your finger up me, Jaxie. No, you don't get that. But I wanted to get your take on this because it's something I've always observed. It'd be a case of, hello, Michael. Um, what do you do for a living? I'm a singer. Do you get sick of people saying, oh, really? Sing me a song. Yeah. Yeah, they that's exactly that. It happens all the time, right? Yeah, yeah, that's exactly what happens. And I was on a, I was on a Skype call about something totally unrelated yeah. uh, recently for a business opportunity that I got, and it's nothing to do with singing. And the host brought me in and said Michael's going to join us for a song now, and everybody waited expecting me to sing a line. But uh, yeah, it was funny. It was funny. We we laughed it off. But yeah, it happens when when you meet people. Yeah. Or, or the, the stranger thing is, and I'm by no means famous, but people 
know me that have been to the shows or if they've come to Tenerife or whatever, and I'll be walking along the street or, or I'll be somewhere and people will come up to me and because they know, you, you must get this now, Chris, they know they know you on, on YouTube. Yeah. So they feel like you are as familiar with them. So they come up to you and go, oh, hello. I had a bloke last week come up to me. I was just sitting in a bar having a coffee. He walked over and he sat down. And I said, hello, mate. And he went, all right. And I went, yeah, he went, I'm here. Yeah, yeah but he and needs went, to give you some context because you don't, yeah. And, and apparently he'd messaged me six months ago to say, oh, I've booked to come in. Uh, right, okay, okay. You know what sure, I mean? But sure, I'd, sure, I'd never yeah. seen him before. When he, when, he, when he told me his name, I recognised the name. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, on yeah, videos but, yeah and whatever yeah. as you would on YouTube. He, he, but he, he just plugged himself just start out. With, I, I'm, I've come to see the show. Yeah. I spoke to you a couple of months ago. Yes, yes. But this was two o'clock in the daytime having a coffee and like, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, like yeah. shorts and a T-shirt, nothing to do, nothing to do with the context of performing. He's no, plugged himself no, down no, and because no, he no. recognised me, he yeah. expected me to be as familiar with him as an audience member. But, you know, it's a nice, it's a nice thing to have. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. No, I, I just get to people just... just it's, it's what is what, what we get um, is because obviously we talk every day, people are aware of, of your of your opinion. Mm. And, um, and and I ain't got the best memory in the world, so I I might I might have said something a couple of months ago, and then someone will someone will come back and they'll say, so that thing you said, so uh, that, that, and then you've you got to then trace. Oh, what did I say? What well, I say? Okay, yeah, and uh, you know what I mean. So they're, they're carrying on um, mm. something that you you know you you might have said, but yeah, I mean you know, I mean people are people are amazing, particularly on match day. It's it's um, you know, it's incredible, really, to be perfectly honest with you. You know, real, real pleasure, real, real pleasure. Um, where are you performing, mate? Uh, so I'm, I'm landing Wednesday. I'm obviously watching the game Thursday with my friend. First show is Friday night, Friday the 12th, and that's at Loughton Royal British Legion, which is yeah. only one stop away from the stadium on a train from Stratford. Um, that's Churchill in Loughton. Uh, hopefully, if you'll be good enough, I think I think Gonzo is going to stick the links if you don't oh, mind. Absolutely, I'm going to stick the links. Yeah, send it, send them, send it to me, and I'll put them directly under this video. Lovely thing. So yeah, Lout Lout and RBL will be an evening with me. Soul, Motown, reggae, uh, ska, R and B, all different really. Um, food is included in the price of the ticket. They do deli lovely food there. Um, lots of they do a hot and cold buffet, but it's just so much food keeps coming out. So it's a great night. Cheap beer. Um, that's the first one. So that's just me on my own. An evening with me, Soul and Motown Reggae. And on Saturday, I'm at the Circus Tavern, Perfleet, as part, ah. of yeah, part of something called Tenerife Nights, where uh, there won't be so much of me, but there's four or five great acts that people will know from Tenerife. We're all flying over. Um, I think there's five or 600 people coming to that at the moment. Um, and the link for that, I'll also send you. So that's more of a, a variety what, show. What night, what night is that on? That's Saturday the 13th. Yeah. Right, Saturday okay. 13th, so that's Friday the 12th, Loughton RBL, Saturday the 13th, Circus Tavern, Perfleet, uh, and they're the only two ones open to the public at the moment. Then I'm going to, uh, I've not told you this, I'm coming to the Fulham game on Sunday, so I might catch you for a, for a beer somewhere. Ah, I see. You've got to be careful, actually. I'd say it's loads of colds and you don't want to, you know, you don't want that with your, with your singing, you need to look out for your voice. So, um, yeah, loads of colds. you on the mouth. Place, well, you know, only after the shows is five right, okay. not, be not before enough. you get a get a nasty sore throat. Um, no, no, listen, brilliant. And I've got to tell you, everybody, he's got a great voice, really, really, really great voice. Um, great guy as well, lovely guy, great voice. Uh, really big supporter of Hammers Chat as well. He's he's a really really good geezer. He really is. Um, before you go, Wolves, feeling confident. Yeah, strangely, I am. I am. You were talking earlier on about whether it's time to rotate and whatever. Look, I know Leverkusen is really important. I, I don't think we've got any more than 11 or 12 players, to tell you the truth. Leave it as boys. I'll tell you what. <laughs> no, that's what I mean. I'll tell you what. I, I mean, I know I'm plagiarising a little bit what, what Charlie and Gio were saying. I am confident for 65 minutes and then I worry. I worry about the fatigue. I worry about Antonio having to come off. Um but uh, yeah, I feel like if we can get a good start, and yeah, it'll be nice to see our big Craig Dawson, wouldn't it? It would be nice. It, it, it will be nice. Yeah, we yeah, missed yeah. him. We've, we've not replaced. We've not got a centre half, old school like him, and and we've missed it. I think, frankly. But that's you see, this is this for me. This is Moyes at his best, and this is why he's he's in his element. He's in his element. That's why. That's why for me, boys don't need. 
a big scouting department. Yeah. It's, it's why it never suited Moyes. He's spending 450 minutes. Why he's got so much of it wrong. Mm-hmm. That is him to pick up a loan signing from Watford who's dropped out the championship and then yeah. realistically has been our best defender. Our best defender has been our cheapest. That's it. To get his ramshackle, ramshackle team made up of journeymen and, and all the rest of it and to get them, you know, I mean, and to get them playing, to take Antonio again, you know, and turn him into a winger and something like that. I, I know we paid big money for, for yeah. Bowen, but he was still a player in the championship with Hull. This is what he, I feel he does. So he, exactly. Does this stuff really, really yeah. well. And, and he, he deserves it. I'm very, very happy, uh, an awful lot, to um, to talk about the money he's lost, Moyes, and and, and the transfers he's got wrong, and he's, he's got many wrong. But that is, is a really good one. But, you know, a, and I mean, it's a great transfer, Dawson. I, I think why it's important... The trouble is, and the reason you can't continue with it now is as good a transfer as that was with Dawson. It's not like it was a good transfer and we made 30, 40 million on it or, or something like that. The trouble is now with what were these um, uh, profit and sustainability regulations, you can't afford to do a Vlasic. You can't afford to lose half the sum on a GERD in 18 months. You, you can't afford the Skamaka stuff. You cannot afford that stuff to happen. And unfortunately, as good as he is at getting the bargain players in, he does have a massive habit of losing lots of money, big money, yeah. on a lot of the bigger players. And um, and I just if for any team, they're going to struggle to do that now. But I, I just yeah, I just think you know Dawson was a was a was a great sign, and and, and you know. He had to go for family reasons. That otherwise, was, the defence has suffered. There's no doubt about it. Because I was going to say, what was unfortunate about that, and you have to feel a little bit of sympathy for Moyes in the regard that it was a loss of circumstance. It was, you know, yes. We know it was personal circumstances, and we'll say no more than that. But for the money he received for him, you were never going to go and be able to to replace for that money what what the sort of grit and the heady yeah. goals and the you know the sort of characteristics that Dawson brought to the team you were never for the sum of money we received going to be able to go and replace that and that was unfortunate that was just one of those things circumstances but yeah, it's a pity. yeah. so you think you think you're right you fancy a win I fancy a 3-1 win. Yeah, I can't see us win. keeping a clean sheet with Wobbly at the back, but that front four, we're devastating when we click and I can see us, I, I, you know, fingers crossed, I can see us clicking nice early goal and get settled and then we'll stick a few more past them, maybe concede one, then we'll see it out. So yeah, well, I feel good about it. That'd be I nice. like it. I like it. Yeah, I haven't... Hmm. I don't know. I'd, I'd better say something because I've not done, I've not done the preview with Gio. Um... So the games are thick and fast at the moment. Yeah. I'll match you. I'll, I'll match you. I'll match you just because I can't think of anything other than that. Well, I think first we'll of all, can you see us keeping a clean sheet? No, I can't. I, I agreed with. I agreed with that bit. I do think we can score lots of goals. But, but, but I, 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 what I will do is I will caveat that by saying that's if he does choose that team. Um, at some point, yeah. he is going to have to rotate. At some type of point, he's going to have to make substitutions. I'm less concerned about the gap between now. Saturday to Thursday, I'm, I'm not bothered about that. Yeah. It's what comes after. We've it's got that the extra run day. afterwards. Yeah. We've got the extra day, I think. It, you, you do wonder if he'll, if he'll swap out Zuma for a, a word, don't you? Because I couldn't imagine Zuma playing three games. No. No, but that that doesn't that doesn't matter. That being said, I I thought Zuma had a pretty damn good game. Mm. Um, what to give him a player rating? I think he gave him eight out of ten um, yeah. for Tottenham actually. So yeah, I think he had a pretty damn good game, and and he and he didn't make any mistakes in terms of defending. Um, before that it was his passing was was pretty bad, but yeah, uh, no, but I I agree. He can't keep blogging Zuma. There's, there's no doubt about it. But you can't keep blogging all the players. But yeah, I'll, I'll match. I'll match your free one. I'll match your free one. We'll, we'll see what they think in the build-up show. Before we go, and I don't know how you are for time. Are, are we mentioning my my thoughts on the other defender and what we we're talking about? Or no, we no, we'll, we'll we'll leave it only because only because we've done half an hour. It's match yeah. day, um, and we got kick off at. Um, well, yes, we got, we got basically, you know, we, we haven't got an evening game, but we'll come back on that. We will, we will come back on that because I do yeah. think that's a video in its own right. So we, we, def, we definitely, well, maybe we can discuss that over on Patreon. Actually, that'd be, um, yeah, that'd get, be nice get all one. the patrons involved in that one. And if you're not a patron, then become a patron. There you go. You could, you could have a seven day free trial. Actually, links in the description below. He's a patron. I am indeed, and I'll tell you what else we'll do for the Loughton show because I have a little bit more control over the tickets there. 
anyone who's interested in coming to the show, we'll do a we'll do a, a five quid discount for patrons. How much chat patrons and have a discount off the show? There you go. Can't say fair, can't say fairer than that, can you? Hey, cheers, mate. Nice one. We like, we no, like no, that. Links in the description below. Patreon.com forward slash hammers chat. Uh, all the shows will be linked in the description below. Uh, I've just got to get uh, the links, but um, there you go, Michael Levy Jr. What can you say? He's all great entertainment, not just on here, but clearly at the shows as well. He needs to um, needs to keep away from the lurgy when he comes over. And um, mate, in, uh, safe journey over, mate. And um, you, enjoy the game. To so you're going to watch. You obviously you're going to watch this in Tenerife, and then yeah, yeah, yeah. Watch it, yeah. What, yeah, watch it, watching the Wolves game here, uh, and then I'll be over for the, the away leg at Leverkusen in the UK, and then I'm going to Fulham on on the Sunday. There you go. Well, safe yeah. journey, all you lot. Myself and Gio will catch up with you today, an hour and five minutes before kickoff. Don't be late. Well, you can be late if you want to, but you're, you don't want to miss that bet, do you? I think that's the most important thing. <laughs> <laughs>